Good morning. <clears throat> Good to be with you this morning for morning prayer. Uh, it's Tuesday, it's the 26th of May. And so let's begin with our prayers. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, Pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk of ch as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our psalm is number 99. The Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty king who loves justice, you have established equity you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God, bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name, they called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud, they kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord God, mighty King, you love justice and establish equity. May we love justice more than gain, and mercy more than power, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing our readings in Numbers, chapter 22, and reading from verse 36. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him in the Moabite town that was on the banks of the Arnon, right on the boundary of his land. Balak said to Balaam, didn't I send an urgent message for help? Why didn't you come when I called? Do you think I can't pay you enough? And Balaam said to Balak, well, I'm here now, but I can't tell you just anything. I can speak only words that God gives me, no others. Balaam then accompanied Balak to Kiriath Herzog street town, Balak slaughtered cattle and sheep for sacrifices and presented them to Balaam and the nobles who were with him. At daybreak, Balak took Balaam up to Bamoth Baal, the heights of Baal, so that he could get a good view of some of the people. Balaam said, build me seven altars here and then prepare seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did it. Then Balaam and Balak sacrificed a bull and a ram 
on each of the altars. Balaam instructed Balak, stand watch here beside me, the whole burnt offering while I go off and by myself. Maybe God will come and meet with me. Whatever he shows or tells me, I'll report to you. Then he went off by himself. And God did meet with Balaam. Balaam said, I've set up seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then God gave Balaam a message. Return to Balak and give him this message. And he went back and found him stationed beside his whole burnt offering and with him all the nobles of Moab. Then Balaam spoke his message oracle. Balak led me here from Aram, the king of Moab, all the way from the eastern mountains. Go curse Jacob for me, go damn Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I damn whom God has not damned? From rock pinnacles I see them, from hilltops I survey them. Look, a people camping off by themselves, thinking themselves outsiders among nations. But who could ever count the dust of Jacob or take a census of cloud of dust Israel? I want to die like these right living people. I want an end just like theirs. And Balak said to Balaam, what's this? I brought you here to curse my enemies and all you've done is bless them. Balaam answered, don't I have to be careful to say what God gives me to say? Holy Spirit, creator, from your breath, all creatures drew their life. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, Christ promised you would always be with us and in us. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, comforter, you bring us to birth as God's children. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, you make us a living sign of God's presence. Holy Spirit, come. Amen. And now from the Gospel of Luke, reading from chapter 8 and verse 1. Jesus continued according to plan, travelled to town after town, village after village, preaching God's kingdom, spreading the message. The twelve were with him. There were also some women in their company who had been healed of various evil afflictions and illnesses. Mary, the one called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, wife of Chusa, Herod's manager, and Susanna, along with many others who used their considerable means to provide for the company. As they went from town to town, a lot of people joined in and travelled along. He addressed them using this story. A farmer went out to sow his seed. Some of it fell on the road. It was tramped down and the birds ate it. Other seed fell in the gravel. It sprouted but withered because it didn't have good roots. Other seed fell in the weeds and the weeds grew with it and strangled it. Other seed fell in rich earth and produced a bumper crop. Are you listening to this? Really listening? His disciples asked, why did you tell this story? And he said, You've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. There are others who need stories. But even with stories, some of them aren't going to get it. Their eyes are open, but don't see a thing. Their ears are open, but don't see a thing. This story is about some of those people. The seed is the word of God. The seeds on the road are those who hear the word, but no sooner do they hear it 
and the devil snatches it from them so they won't believe and be saved. The seeds of the gravel are those who hear with enthusiasm, but the enthusiasm doesn't go very deep. It's only another fad. And the moment there's trouble, it's gone. And the seed that fell in the weeds, well, these are the ones who hear. But then the seed is crowded out and nothing comes of it as they go about their lives worrying about tomorrow, making money and having fun. But the seed in the good earth, these are the good hearts who seize the word and hold on no matter what, sticking with it until there's a harvest. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. All who are led by the spirit of God are children of God, for we have received the spirit that enables us to cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness that we are children of God, and if God's children, then heirs of God. If heirs of God, then fellow heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him now, that we may be glorified with him. These sufferings that we now endure are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be revealed, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. So let's come now and bring our prayers for the world. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and we ask that your Holy Spirit would help us whenever we pray. Help us now as we pray for our world. And in these strange and awful times of plague, of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the crisis of trying to manage that in our complex economies around the world, we cry out to you for help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who right now are suffering with a disease, some at home, some with light symptoms, some with terrible fevers, some breathless. Lord, strengthen them and help those around them to manage and to care. We pray for those in hospital, um, those in intensive care, those on the ventilators, and Lord, we ask that whatever their state of consciousness, that there would be peace and a sense of your light and your love reaching through to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are helping with the health care and the social care of COVID sufferers. Lord, we're so aware that they have been on a long, long campaign already of working long hours in very pressured and stressful circumstances. And we ask for your strength and your help to them to be very real, uh, a courage and a conviction from within them. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would bring that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you those who are planning our response and across the world the response to the public health crisis we long and pray for them to have wisdom and insight and the courage to make good and just trade-offs where those are necessary with the vulnerable and the marginalized at the heart of their decisions we pray for uh, ways forward that are wise and well managed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those in self-isolation at home. Lord, uh, a good number in our own community at St. Peter's. We give thanks for their faithfulness and resolve uh, in dealing with the prospect of still many more weeks and perhaps months of uh, self-isolation. We pray for a blessing for them. We pray that uh, the time that they've got within the narrow walls of their homes would uh, be a time in your presence, time when they're feeling supported and loved by their church, by their families, by their friends, and that their needs would be met. Lord, we particularly pray for the mental needs, mental health needs, and pray that there would be, through your Holy Spirit, um, a lightness and a hopefulness and a joy that sweep aside other thoughts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you would, through your Spirit, bring us in touch with God's heaven, heavenly reality. And we pray that through your Holy Spirit, you would bring us in step with Christ's kingdom ways. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, whose servant Augustine was sent as the apostle of the English people, grant that as he laboured in the spirit to preach Christ's gospel in this land, so all who hear the good news may strive to make your truth known in all the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so with longing we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I look forward to being with those who can join at five o'clock. There's raising of hands going on. Um, I will just see if I can do anything about that. No, I think the raising of hands are holy hands. So praise God. Have a good day, everyone.